Hey, so good morning, everybody. Uh, hopefully you can hear me okay. We're gonna get rocking and rolling here. Well, thanks for being patient here for these couple of minutes. We've had uh, quite a few people want to join this webinar. Um, I think we've had, uh, I think 117 people signed up. So I know a lot of them with time zone just want the recording, so they're not gonna be here. So I appreciate you uh, joining me this morning on this Thursday of this uh, lovely adventure in quarantine, teaching, learning, survival, and everything in between. So. You know, I had to bust out the banana shirt just to kind of get a little, give myself a little pep talk here. It can kind of be a grind. Uh, I know I, I will. I, I should. I'll send a picture in the follow-up email of my daughter yesterday. My youngest is eight years old. Uh, of the picture of her attempting to do uh, some homework yesterday, and um, I think the picture will resonate as she's sprawled out on the couch, just on the break of a you know little temper tantrum that I'm sure we've all had, even as adults. So um, I want to get into the uh, the learning here today. So just a, a couple quick things. Uh, I see some familiar faces from the first webinar, and just a couple things. This kind of set the stage so you know a bunch of resources. And so one, this is being recorded, so I will edit and then get all this submitted to you. When I'm done with that, I have it to you by tomorrow. I want you to know that if you haven't received the um, the participant guide, hopefully by now through the 14,000 emails and stuff that I've shared with you, I'll put it in the chat here again. Uh, this has everything uh, you need in uh, the participant guide and, and in there, is a couple things. So I'm going to jump to this screen share and just highlight, and then we'll get into the uh, the meat and potatoes of this uh, presentation here. But I just want to show you where a couple things are on this participant guide because it's um, pretty important in terms of moving forward. So hopefully you can see my screen here now. Um, number one, if you haven't added your your name and stuff to this this place here. Um, this is just for me. I have to just report numbers, how many attended the webinar and the recording. So if you just throw that in there, uh, that'd be great. Um, just helps me keep a head count. And keep letting them know that, that there is a need uh, for some of this learning as, as we continue to move forward, um, even though our brains are probably about at capacity. I have put in this participant guide the agenda. And what you're going to find is everything we're going to talk about today, I have a link next to it. So what I've done is created this entire webinar and actually everything from the first webinar in a Flipgrid, the Flipgrid Geeking PD. So you can go through and kind of self-pace this yourself. So if I go too fast or something today or you want to spend more time on it on your own, I just want you to know that it's all right here numbered. So we're going to start today with uh, number six and work our way through. We covered one through five in, in, the, in the beginning webinar. Um, and if you've never used Flipgrid and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm behind, you're not, you'll be fine. It's not an overly complicated tool. That's what makes it so nice. But I just want you to know that they're all here. And each of these, when you click on them, has a YouTube video tutorial that kind of walks you through some of the things we're going to go through today. So I just want you to know that that is an option for you uh, that you have access to in this agenda. I've just hyperlinked all those in there. Um, I did put a link as well to the first webinar. So if you miss that and, and do want to go back and watch that, it's there for you, um, for you to have as well. And then under the shared notes and ideas are just some of the things that we discussed in the first webinar of some just general resources in case you're not familiar with where some of these are. I think the biggest ask in the last webinar was I shared this integration doc, resource number four, where you can go in and search, say, like uh, math grade six, eight, and it will give you a list of ideas catered to that or social studies or things like that. So that's resource number four uh, from the first webinar for those that were part of that. That was probably the number one most asked resource that I talked about um, and then trying to find it. So that's there. Um, the last thing is if you have questions during the webinar, sometimes it's hard for me to, we've got like 17 different things going on on my screen. And it's hard to navigate the chat all the time while I'm presenting. Um, throw those questions in there. I'm going to try at the end to address some of those, weave some of these in. And if I don't get to it in the webinar, I will follow up. Um, and, and make sure I, I get that, that information to you. So there's already quite a few in there that, that are pretty good. And so I just want you to know there's a space for you to add those in there. Um, I'll try to check that periodically as we get rocking and rolling. And so um, 
that's, I think, for, for the gist of, of most of the things here, of everything you need is in that part, participant guide. And anything else that gets brought up to this presentation, I will load in there, as well as do a follow-up email with everything that we address or cover in this webinar in a follow-up email for you to have access to. So um, if there's anything else that you need, let me know. Um, this is probably the biggest thing there is just knowing that you can go back and self-pace. You can reuse any of these um, with your own staff or your students um, as you see fit. So um, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this, uh, this webinar. So this is beyond the basics. So I'm not going to explain how to create an account, how to create a grid, how to create a topic. Uh, we covered that in the previous webinar. Um, if you are new to Flipgrid and you're not sure how to do that, um, don't panic. You're still going to be able to relatively pick up pretty quick here um, in, in what we're doing. But what I want to do today is just look at some of these other features and really start to think about classroom application as we use these, whether it's teacher feedback, student feedback, the, the learning and teaching mechanisms, how we can create some interactive lessons, that type of thing. So as we're going to, you know, if, if you're using some of these, um, you know, feel free to load your ideas in the chat for the rest of the people to see it as we go through. Um, it may not stop and, and highlight every comment that's in there, but you know, the, the greatest learning voice among educators are educators. And so I think it's important that the more teachers we have sharing examples, um, the better off we're going to be. So with that being said, we're going to start off here with the vibes and featured response. So we talked a lot, or if you're using Flipgrid, I think a lot of you have probably figured out how to record a video, how to post a topic, and now it starts to get to the idea of how do I start to give feedback? And, and there's no easy route around giving feedback, you know, to shorten time and things like that. But one of the cool things that I think it's often overlooked, um, it's not earth shattering by any means, but I think it's a, an, an important one is this vibe feature. And so if this is a, this is just a, a test one, you see my, my two students that kind of look like me, poor, poor guys there. Um, but if I were to click here on this, this student video as a demo, um, you can see at the top of the video, this leave a vibe. What this does is allows you to give a quick 16 character comment. So, you know, if I wanted to go through, I could say awesome or great graphics or whatever it is, something really quick. You only get 16 characters. And then when you put that on there, everybody that has access to that video gets to see it. So it's kind of a win-win, depending on how you're using Flipgrid. If you have it moderated where it's only for you, then only that student's going to see that. But if you have a, a public one where the kids are interacting and working back and forth and having collaboration, uh, the kids get to see, one, the student itself, your comment, but the other students get to see that kind of quick little vibe. And so now you're, you're kind of celebrating good ideas. You can highlight like key things that kids are doing well and hoping that it spreads to other videos. And so it's just a quick little thing. I think it's easy to overlook um, on there, but it's just right up top. You put that little vibe, you hit the update, and then it's always going to be there up top. Um, for the kids to see, um, whoever has access to that video. And so while this isn't necessarily super in-depth, you know, high-level feedback, sometimes it's just enough for us to acknowledge the kid's response. So um, I mentioned the previous one, my wife's a, a eighth grade algebra teacher, and she's trying to do these daily videos, just kind of quick little, like, tips or tricks or just fun little things to get the kids excited that you, you know, want to check into the work each day. And she uses this quite a bit, like right now the kids are sharing like their, their favorite song that they're listening to. So she can just put these little comments up there. She doesn't need to do points and rubrics and all that. Boom, there it is. Um, so that's that's the vibe, um, you know, and just a quick little one, but sometimes it's easy to overlook when we're looking at the kids' videos, not even realizing that that's sitting up there. The other part of this is let's say that you have a response from a student or maybe you're doing this with your di district and, and PD and you have a response that you want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to see. And so this star up here is going to allow you to mark certain responses. As and when you do that, I mark this star and that star highlights in, in, in yellow here. When I do that, it's going to move. Now, there's not a whole lot here. It's going to move that featured response to the top of your, of, your, of your topic. So if I had 100 of these, it would move it to the top. 
and kids, as well as you, get to see that that the, that the star there is is highlighted, um, and it's going to remain there. So as other videos get posted, as opposed to being timestamped, it's going to sit there up top. So this might be used in a couple ways. Number one, you as an educator, maybe you have a, a topic and you want to give a model example of how a response should be. You could create one as a student and then feature your own thing so it sits at the top all the time so kids could reference that. Maybe it's a really good insight or question by another student and you want that to be up top for the other kids to notice. You could do that as well. The other nice feature about featured responses is this, and, and not that you guys are thinking about next year already because we're barely surviving now, but let's say that you're using this Flipgrid and you're starting to see some value in it, not just in remote teaching, but also for your classroom next year. Um, hopefully we're back face to face. So if I wanted to take this one, so this is that, that one where I just did that featured response. And let's say that I wanted to duplicate this topic. So let's pretend we fast forward to the next school year and I don't, I can reuse my topics. And so let's say that I want to throw it, I'll just, um, let's just pick this one. This is my, my next year saying, here's what's cool about this. I can choose to keep only the topic, but I can also choose to keep featured responses. So if, I, if you're using this now with, with an assignment and you have two or three kids that have given a really excellent response, if you make that featured and then you duplicate that next year, it'll bring those examples along with it. So now if you're reusing this task or assignment next year, you can be like, hey, and look at the three model examples from last year of what, what these kids did to give you a sense of what I'm looking for. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to wait for that next perfect response or example. It's just a great way as you start to think about, you know, future use of this. So you're not always starting from scratch year after year. So it's just a, a good little thing. Maybe something now if you're using Flipgrid just to, to mark one or two so you have it, um, you know, and, and it might trigger some thought next year. So just a, another quick little thing that's in Flipgrid in terms of longevity um, to make your life easy. Um, or maybe it's, it's one of these things that you find yourself reusing a topic over and over again, if you have like, like a standard kind of introduction topic that you're using from class to class or unit to unit, whatever it might be, boom, you've got it all set up and you don't have to do a whole lot of heavy lifting to make that work. So those are, are those two um, quick little topics there of the vibes and, and featured response. Um, I'm trying to just multitask you see if there's any, any questions on that. If there is, you can throw it in the chat or on that, on that question guide. I don't see anything, but if I'm ignoring it, I apologize. Um, the next thing that I want to take a look at is Spark and, and the Flipgrid AR. And so as, as we're looking again at the, the Spark, if I go back to this same example here that I just featured, one of the things um, that you can also do is right below it is this little flame. So let's say um, you're teaching, you have a topic, say current events for this week, and a kid poses a really powerful question that you think is worn for the other kids to respond to. Or there is a, you, you, you're using this as a common formative, so my wife's algebra teacher, and a kid has a really excellent way of how he solved this math problem different from the rest. So what you could do then is use this spark and what this Spark allows you to do is to take any video response. And when you do that, it'll turn that response into a new topic. So now it becomes the topic for students or whoever you're using Flipgrid with to respond to. So it's not just a video response. It now becomes a topic in your grid. And so um, my wife, as, as a teacher right now, we haven't quite done this yet. We're going to explore it here next week where every time a kid has a new solution, we're going to make that a new topic and then kids can give feedback and responses to what they like or, or how they thought differently. And now we've got this generation of, of feedback versus trying to comb through all these, you know, 180 responses, trying to find that one. Kids aren't going to do that, but we could highlight the key ones. Or if a kid asks a question or if you're getting that question that's been asked 422 times, you can make that question a topic and answer it. All kids have access to it. So you're not, you know, answering the same thing over and over and over again. So you would just hit that spark if I wanted to spark this. And you're going to see what happens. That I can go in now. I can edit the title. I can change the response. I can do everything as if I created a topic from scratch. 
The only difference is it's going to be that kid's video or whoever you're using Flipgrid with is going to be the focus. And so it's just a, a pretty cool way to bring forth maybe some quality questions, work ideas by, by students and, and that sort of thing. Um, and so again, does, it keeps you from having to necessarily like reinvent the wheel. And now you're starting to bring some interactive and robustness um, to the kids and to people you're working with by, by just using this platform to move and shuffle content, questions and ideas around as needed. Um, the other one that I have linked in here with Spark is this Flipgrid AR. And this one may not be ideal with remote teaching and learning, but I'm gonna share it anyways, because it could be something you could sample with now, as well as just thinking about as you're creating topics now for your classroom, hopefully we get to return to that um, at, at some point in time. So what you can do here with the Flipgrid AR, um, if I wanna go into this grid here, let's just pick this one. And let's say, I want this topic to be someplace in my classroom. Think about station rotation. Maybe there's certain places in the room. Think about a showcase event for parents if you have like we a all flush. Uh, Think about any way in which people maybe are, are walking and moving around and you want okay. them to interact with Flipgrid or a video yeah. and, and, and do some response or interaction with. So what you can do with any topic or, or any kind of response here is if I go to share this, you get this this QR code. Uh, QR codes are nothing new, but that's what you would you would go and you would you would print this off. Maybe you have your own little template. I've seen it where um, an elementary classmate had like cut out figure. They they did like a biography report, and on the hand of the of the model they made was this QR code. So people can go through if you have the the app on the phone or any QR code reader app. When they scan that app, that video plays right there. So it's not something necessarily in remote teaching and learning right now is, is really valuable. But I've seen this around where, where, where teachers will have these QR codes stashed around the room and they're trying, you know, and kids are walking around trying to look at a video, give a video response answer, you know, checking their work, moving back and forth. I've seen it at like family events where if a kid isn't standing next to the work, but you still want to see the presentation, that video could load up and they can share it that way um, and, and, and start to work through it that those ways of, of maneuvering. So um, the idea of QR codes and this kind of AR is nothing new, but it's just being aware that it's within Flipgrid. You don't have to use yet another tool to do that work. It's, it's all built in and, and readily available. I've seen one I saw on Twitter the other day. It actually was really cool. Um, they take these QR codes and what the teachers do is they use that for like their, um, they, they send home positive messages. And so they'll print a QR code that's their positive message that goes like in the kid's lanyard and the parents can go home and scan that code and they can hear from the teacher about uh, how well their kid was behaving or doing something positive. And then each day they just send out one of these home with the kid. And so I thought that was kind of a, a cool way too. So just thinking differently about how we could use some of this, you know, not just for content, but as we start to think about, you know, the social emotional needs and just building relations, that type of thing, there's lots of possibilities, you know, so thinking about, your communication channels, what you do in your class, and, and there may or maybe not be a fit for something like this as you go through. You know, um, These could be maybe QR codes outside of your classroom. So on, on back to school night or, or family night, if parents had a QR code app, or I don't know every parent has a magically a QR app on their phone, but they could have that. It could be a little video introduction of you as a teacher, like, hey, I'm Mr. Mauer, blah, 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 blah. Like, it's always there whether you're available in the room or not. So you know, just thinking differently, um, about that AR tool. Um, next, I'm gonna just click here real quick to make sure I'm, I don't see question-wise linked to the AR. I'm not seeing anything yet there. Um, and we can do some discussion at the end. So if you do have questions, I'll stick around um, uh, to do that. So the, the message is they have to have a Flipgrid account. Actually, that question, um, Kim, is a perfect segue to the next one of mixtape. Um, so, a lot of people are having questions about the mixtape and how to create it and what it does. So a mixtape is basically anywhere you go and you see, let me show you what this looks like here. If I'm in any sort of video response, let's say this one here, let me pause this so it doesn't, there we go. 
this little cassette tape, the old school days. And I think in the video tutorial, I asked people like, do you remember like your little boom box holding up, trying to record the songs from like the, the top, top nine at night on the radio, because you know, you didn't, couldn't stream all your music. Well, the mixtape is, is think of that as a similar structure. I can add any response from any grid that I own and make a mixtape. So let's pretend that I have a, second period flip grid, a fourth period flip grid, a sixth period flip grid. And I want to pick and pull the top three from all these classes. I could take any response and add it to a mixtape. And when I click, click that, that mixtape, I can create one. And you can see I've already got some created. And when you create that, it'll add that video to that mixtape. What a mixtape is, just as you can see there, is it's viewable only. They can't access anything else in the grids or topics. They can't respond. They can't do anything but watch. It's simply that a mixtape. And you can pick and choose the order of the videos. You can structure that however you want. And then with the mixtape, you can make that a QR code. So, Kim, to go to your question is, with, with, with the mixtape, you don't have to have an account. It's you can just scan it, boom, there it is. I can make, I can take the mixtape link and put that out in my newsletter. Anybody can access that, and so because they're they're not able to edit, they're not able to see, you know, all the other things going on in the grid, and so that is a, a nice little feature to have. And so I have one, um, and all your mixtapes that you create on your admin panel are up top. When you look up here for mixtapes. And you can see that I've got three here. Um, here was a, a show and tell mixtape from uh, activity we did uh, where I had some teachers around the world share how they were using Flipgrid. So I made that readily available for everybody. And then you can just go to this share and just like you would share a regular grid or a topic or, you know, that QR code, right? Boom, right there. That QR code is, that's what I could send out. People have access to, to go ahead and watch and I could share it that way. Um, so it's just a really cool way to kind of highlight um, work. I'm seeing a lot of people use this now for like end of the year celebrations. Like it was teacher appreciation week. So a lot of teachers were having kids submit video responses and they were making these mixtapes um, for the teachers of all these kids saying nice things about them, um, you know, without having to give them access to everything on their flip grid. And so there's, there, there's lots of cool ways we can think about this in, in terms of using a mixtape um, as we build relations, not just within the class, but with our community, parents, that sort of thing. Um, and so, uh, let's see, can you have a, is there a way to make the mixtape in a viewing order and the students can't alter the order? Yeah, so they can't access, they can't change, only the person that creates the mixtape can, can, can mess with it. So you can see here, like this is my order. If for me as an educator, I can change these things around. But if I go to share this mixtape, I'll show you what it looks like from a, I'm going to incognito, Actually, I won't because you won't be able to see that screen here. But let me just paste what this mixtape looks like from a non-educator thing. So this is what it looks like. It's in the order that I've placed it in. All right. They can see how many videos they are. They have their names and stuff down here. It kind of does like this starring. Like this is a list of everybody that's in the mixtape, who created it. This is what they see. And then when they go to hit play, it'll just play in succession. You don't have to click and stop each oh. one. It just plays. So if you had like an event or some sort of a assembly, we'll, we'll probably never be able to do assemblies again, but back in the day when we could do assemblies, you could just hit a play button and it would just play continuous. So, you know, just, just some different things there for you to kind of consider um, with that mixtape. Um, the other one, and we talked about this a little bit in the last I webinar, I would um, through it. but there is an option up here called Disco Library. And I just want to bring this back to your attention. Um, so what the Disco Library is, um, I think now they're over, geez, yesterday there were 17,000 topics. Now there's over, you know, 18,000 topics. Things that teachers have created for other people to use, as well as all these organizations. So these people, these organizations, these teachers have shared with you their topics, their grids for you to copy and use. And so if you use any of these tools, um, you know, we think about app smashing without getting too complicated into these, these organizations have done this. Um, so probably the one that I've seen the most used um, so far just in this remote learning is the Flocabulary. Um, they do, if you haven't used Flocabulary, they do these little wraps and rhymes and a lot of things. Um, but they do a weekly current event wrap. And 
teachers are using that to send out to their students. I, I'm on the social studies team, so maybe that's why I see this so much. And they're sending this out, and then kids are having conversation about the current events being addressed in the Flow Cabulary video. It's short, it's sweet. Um, you don't have to worry too much about bias and controversy that way, but then you could link in other articles and stuff for them to read, and they can respond. Um, you could have kids create their own raps back. I mean, there's just a ton of stuff in here, code.org. Um, you know, has lots of cool ideas of, of that conversation starters. Just if you need some just general props um, to get going. This Wonder Lot Wonderopolis is one of my favorites. Just lots of cool little like curiosity things. And with any of these, you just click on it. So let's say we, we go to this one here. Um, can music help you think? I can see that this one's been used over 4,000 times, um, but I could just click on this one here. And I can take a look at it. I can see that there's a link here for me to go to. Sometimes there's links, sometimes there's video, sometimes it's just a topic. But what I can do is say, like, oh, I want to use this one in my class. I just go here, I pick the grid that I want to send it to, and I add it. And just like anything in Flipgrid, um, my wife was exploring this with some math stuff yesterday. She's like, but I want to put in my, my own graphics, my own little stuff. And so you can go through and edit any of this the way you want. So it just gives you the template. So you don't have to create necessarily from scratch. And then you can tweak it and add all the stuff that you would normally do in a regular topic post. But you can use that from any of them. And the other cool thing in the Disco Library, outside of just these organizations that are sharing, sharing stuff, you can search by audience. You could pick your age level, you could pick my subject, and you could search if you wanted to. Now with anything, I'm not saying all 18,000 of these are amazing. You're going to have to use your own judgment and what you like and not like. But at least you have a place to go to if you're struggling to try to find some ideas or just see how other people are using it. Um, that's the big thing here. You know, I know I keep referencing my wife, but she's my, my teacher and stuff is like, how do we continue to maybe use this Flipgrid? She's having the, the highest interaction or engagement with her kids right now with these eighth graders through Flipgrid. But what else do I do besides just having them document? a process of how to solve a problem. Like what else is there? So we were searching through that yesterday, just being like, what, what are other teachers doing? And so this is a, a great thing here as well. You know, on the flip side, if you're doing something really great, you should submit your ideas to the Disco Library so others can benefit as well. So I know that needs you to be courageous and bold. A lot of times we second guess our work, but you know, just another place for you to, to, to see your work and how it's being used. Because one of the coolest pats on the back of educators is if you do share it and you find out people are using it that don't know you, Makes you feel pretty good. Makes you feel like you got something useful. So um, there is is that there for you. I just wanted to bring that back to light because I just think it's it's a really good one. And when we get stressed about creating content, we forget that sometimes there's a lot already being done. All right. Next one is the co-pilot and guest. And so this is um, and another really kind of cool option that you can do. So let me dive back into one of my grids here. So I'm going to jump down to a project that I'm currently doing right now on waste. So we have a project working with our local landfill on how to solve some, some problems with waste management. But what I have here is um, the curriculum and the projects that we're using. We've got students from around the world doing this, this work. But as a co-pilot, I have uh, the guy that I'm working with from the waste management. His name is Kurt. And he created an account. And I wanted him, he's our expert. He's the guy that when kids are posing questions, I don't, I don't have the answers to. But I don't want to have to be like, hey, here's a link every time a kid asks a question. So I could go here to add a co-pilot, and I can add anyone's email. Now, they have to have a Flipgrid account. So that is the caveat. So anybody you're going to add as a co-pilot, they, they need to have a Flipgrid educator's email. But when I add him to that, he can now add, he can do everything that I could do. The only thing a co-pilot can't do is delete the grid. So whoever has created the grid is the ultimate authority on that. But he can post topics, he can do video responses, he can do assessment, he can do everything. So think about this if you have a team and maybe like you and, and your three colleagues at your grade level have this and maybe one week I'm in charge of giving the feedback the next week. Um, my next colleague's in charge of creating the topic and feedback, and you're kind of breaking up the work that way. Or maybe you're doing a global project, and you want both teachers to have access to everything. So you could add them there, basically think of it as a co-teacher. 
that's what the co-pilot is. They can do everything you can do. Let that go. The, the grid. And so it's just going to um, co-pilots are unlimited or it's some crazy number that I don't think you'd ever reach. Um, I think I've had up to like 20, 25 people as co-pilots at one point, which was borderline stupid, but that's a story for another day. Um, but so I think you'll be, you'll be just fine in terms of that. So that's what that is. But let's say that you want, uh, let's take like a career day. You have people that you want to contribute videos. You want them to have access to some of the stuff, but you don't want them to have full reign of everything. That's where guest mode comes into play. And so what I can do here is let's say that under this uh, current state of trash, I know that Kurt, I, I trust him. Uh, we have all the stuff signed and wavered for all that to be, to be great. But let's say that I want to bring in some of the additional workers, but I don't want them to see everything else. There might be some things here that, that they just don't, they just don't need to have access to everything, but they want to share something. So I could go in this topic to actions and I could add a topic guest. Now what this does, this as you can kind of see here on the screen, it allows family members, your content experts, maybe it's an author, um, you know, virtual guest or whoever it might be. Um, they can have access to the topic, but just that topic. They can't have access to all the other topics or anything else. And so this is where, like I was talking about career day, like maybe you have, you know, normally like I think about some of the schools, they take to the gym and they have like 20 stations set up and kids rotate through. Well, now we can't do that, but maybe we could create 20 videos um, where they could come in and post some videos. So now I could do that by making them a guest and giving them this guest link. They don't have to have an account. They don't have to get goofy. They just need this link right here. And as the guest, I can do a couple of things. If I only want them to view and not do any recording, I could just uncheck this box. But with this checked in, they can make and submit videos. Um, and I would just give them this link right here for the guest. You know, and so maybe this is something where um, I want to send this out. I'm doing uh, something in my classroom and I want to send it out to parents and be like, do any of you use this content in your job? Here's a link to give us a video response of how you're, you're using this content in your job. And I could send that out. The parents don't have to have an account. I don't have to teach them all the nuances of the Flipgrid. When they click this, it's just the big green button with the plus sign. As long as they know how to push that away they go. Um, I can, again, here's that AR code. If I wanted, or this QR code, if I wanted to have this, you know, situated, you know, somewhere in a facility. And let's say I do this, I'm getting good responses, but then all of a sudden, like, I don't want people to have access to this topic anymore, or this code. I could just turn it off with this button here, or maybe I want to give it to a new group. Someone got in there. I don't, I don't really want them to be able to record anymore. This, you know, this, this person just doesn't understand education. I could just go here to create a new link. It would just generate a new link and the old link doesn't work, but I still have an accessible guest link. So you have lots of ways to kind of edit and moderate the, the access that guests have um, with this as, as you get learning. So it's just another way. I mean, you know your students, you know your school and your domain and what you want them to have access to and not have access to. So here's ways to minimize that depending on, on what you're bringing in. Um, and so this is good. We did a global sea turtle project. And so all the sea turtle hospital experts were guests in our flip grids sharing videos every day. But I didn't want them to be bombarded as a co-pilot to get a notification every time a kid submitted a video because they have a full-time job to do. That's for me to moderate. And so that guest is, is a nice way if you're bringing in speakers or authors or things like that, that ha allow the engagement to still happen, but not to like bombard that person either. So just two little cool ways in terms of, of sharing um, as you work either with your colleagues or with the community and, and experts out in the field. Um, the next one here that we have is um, stickers. So I'm gonna go through this kind of quick because I just encourage you that I think the video does a, a nice job with this, um, but I will show you what I mean by this idea of, of stickers. And so one of the things that we've been doing in the, in the Google Geeking PD is how do we create interactive digital assignments and, and things of that nature. 
but we can do some of this too um, within a Flipgrid as we're thinking about, about making videos and, and that sort of thing. Um, so let me just jump in here. Let me just make one. So what you can do with stickers is think about it as um, being able to create interactive stuff as, as you create your videos. And so what I mean by that is there is already a whole set of stickers when, when you record them. And you don't need to see two faces of ugly mugs here. So let me get this whiteboard. Um, there we go. So here with the stickers, you have um, – let me bounce out of here. You've got these stickers here, which have all sorts of emojis and things that you can use. They recently added a series of like arrows. So you could create these charts where maybe I've got some stuff that I want to highlight and I want to point and reference to. I can layer these in. Now, one of the things that I think is, is kind of cool as you're thinking about making videos is with this sticky note, this little yellow poster over here is I can make a little note guide. When I record, this note guide will not be viewable in the recording, but it's for me. But I could go through and put a step progression, you know, and I could just say, uh, for me, left arrow, I'm going to do right arrow, and let's just do top arrow. So what I'm going to do is I know my progression of learning, and I'm going to set up a scenario here where I want to teach a, a lesson um, with my Flipgrid, but I, I want to get it ready before I record. So I could go to this photo sticker here as well. And for these custom stickers, I think sometimes the word sticker throws us off. But if you have a uh, anchor chart or if you have a rubric or if you have a graphic organizer, whatever it is that you have, that custom sticker allows you to load that up onto your video. So this was one that I shared in the tutorial. Say I want to do change. Um, what I can do here then is I'm going to get this ready for a video. And so I'm just going to pick a couple of these goofy ones here just so you can see. And what I'm doing is trying to figure out my focal points of how I want to address this as I, as I teach. Now, before I go record, this looks sloppy and messy. So I have over here in my notes my progression of what I've got here. So I've got my left arrow. I got my right arrow and I got my top arrow. Now, what I can do is I can do this undo and I can get rid of those arrows. They're gone. So I could hit this record button and now I can teach my lesson. And I could sit there. I'm not going to hit record now because I'm doing the stream. But let's say I hit the record, counts down. I can say, hey guys, today we're going to take a look at making change. So, you know, as we get going and then as I'm presenting, Say, you know, I want to just remind you that, you know, a quarter is worth 25 cents. And I can add these on by this redo button as I'm teaching. So now I have the cadence and the pace. I don't have to stop and pause and add these things as we go because that gets really old after a while. You know, I say, you know, as so we talk about the quarter is 25 cents, a penny is one cent. And so today your challenge is to show me in the green circle how you would make a dollar eighty-five. And I want you to put all the coins here in the green canvas. So I, I could set this up as a lesson. This could be the same thing here too where as a student response, maybe this is a paragraph and they have to use the arrows or the digital inking to highlight nouns and verbs or whatever it is that they want to do. And so you can start to create some, some higher quality videos um, by just thinking about the prep work and how you want to present. Not everybody has a ton of editing software. If you want things to look nice, you can easily do that. Um, so you got stuff like that um, as you're creating, and I think it's just trying to think about the next steps of engagement, how we create our content beyond just, you know, in this case, just a tall, bald, ugly guy talking at you, right? After a while, that kind of gets a little old. So what are other ways that we can bring this stuff in? So trying to think about this as what you would normally do in your classroom, either on a whiteboard or with slides or things like that, you could build that out. Secondly, once you start to learn this, you can teach kids how to do this. And kids can start to create some really nice presentations. They can start to create some really cool videos. They just, they're not aware of these things either. They're just like us. They, they can figure out how to record, but they don't start to realize like, oh, I could really start to do some really cool stuff within this Flipgrid, um, you know, as I'm giving presentations or feedback or, you know, a performance assessment, whatever it might be. 
And so I just want to come back to that sticker thing because I think sometimes the sticker and the emoji things, we think, oh, that's cute, that's fun. But there really is some quality learning and teaching that we can do um, with those stickers as well. Um, let's see here. The last two, the last three, I'm going to go through quickly because I know we're at 9:45, and I, I know that there's some questions popping in, and I want to make sure you have a chance to jump on the mic if there's some other things here. So the last three we have is these are our updates that came out in the May 2020 update from Flipgrid. So I will show you what this looks like from a teacher perspective, but just realize the same thing looks at for students. So in videos, if I'm looking here as a teacher, and this is my, my topic, and I'm going through to see what I've assessed, what I haven't, they have now added this feedback feature. It's been there, it hasn't been very good, but now it, it is. So if I'm using a rubric and I'm giving points back, it now shows it here. If I'm doing assignments that don't have points and I just give a, a text comment, or if I give a video response, it will show you now that you've done that with the green check. Kids will see the exact same thing. So from a student perspective, if they've got four or five videos they've posted, if this is empty, they know the teacher hasn't given feedback. If that stuff is there, then they know the teacher has seen it. Um, and so this is just a, a little thing based on request from teachers um, looking for that as, as we get going. So I don't know if I have any here that I haven't looked at. I'm going to try to see. So um, this one here. So I haven't given any feedback to this video. And you can see that it's empty. So if I were to go in here now as a teacher and hey Aaron, um, as I and I either give the points or I give a video feedback or, or, or comments on here, you know, hopefully I would give something a little bit nicer than that. But um, I can email this feedback and now it should op populate right there as that green check mark. So this lets me know from an educator dashboard, boom, I've, I've, I've covered those, those without points or checks I need to give feedback to. The students have the exact same look feature. So they can also see as a quick glance, you know, has the teacher lo looked at my work yet? So just a, a little update that, that that's pretty smooth. Um, the extension, I don't know that it's going to be super helpful at this stage of the game, but when you're back in the classroom, it could be. And let me see here. I might have turned it off, but I'll turn it back on. They now have an extension for the browser. Oh, there it is. Um, and so now, as opposed to kids having to go to flipgrid.com and then yada, 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 logging it all in, you can now just use this extension. It gives you a little pop-up bar, and if you know the code, it'll take you right to it. Now, if your Flipgrid requires a login, the next step would require a login. So um, if I type in this code here, it's gonna take me right to this PD. It's, it's public, there's no password needed. It takes me right to the Flipgrid itself. And so just maybe helpful, maybe not helpful. Um, the other thing too, I, I'm a fan of keyboard shortcuts. I find that if you know keyboard shortcuts, the less I have to move my hands from the keyboard, the more productive I am. And every second saved over the course of a year of work can lead to hours and days. And so uh, Command Shift F also populates that. So if you have the extension, and I do Command Shift F or Control Shift F, it will um, pop right up on your on your screen as well. Oh, it's here. I know you can't see me hitting the keyboard, but it'll it'll pop up here, and then you get that same screen as you would um, with this right here. So maybe helpful, maybe not. I just want you to be aware of that as an extension for the work that you're doing. Uh, maybe a lifesaver, maybe a complete pain in the butt, but at least now you know. And the last one is just notifications. So this is also um, a somewhat newer feature, but you can now moderate. Uh, how you get notifications. So if I talk about my wife again here and I talk about she puts a topic out and every time she posts it, she knows she's going to get 180 Flipgrid videos or 160, whatever it is. She doesn't necessarily want that in her email. Now, if you use filters and things like that, great. But um, I can moderate different grids to do different top notifications. So say this one here, I don't want a notification every time someone pops uh, pops up a new message. So if I go to the grid, to the actions, and I go to grid notifications, 
I can choose how I want to be notified now, which could be very helpful for a lot of you that see lots of students. I could get a daily report where at the, at the end of the day, it's going to tell me, boom, you've got 42 new videos. I could have it weekly, every single time there's a new video or never. So there are times and places, and you can change these notifications however you want. Maybe early on, I do want all the notifications, but after three or four days, I don't want it. Or maybe it's the flip side. Maybe I know when I first initially post, I'm going to be checking it quite a bit. So I don't want a notification every time, but maybe after a week, I need a notification because I'm not going to keep coming back to it. But I always know there's a few kids that are going to turn to work in late. So I want that notification. Um, so you can kind of set those preferences and you can make each grid its own notification. So if I'm looking at, at my grids, you know, on here, I might have some of these that I want to be notified every single time. Some of these might just be weekly, uh, maybe some or never. I can individually choose what I want for those, those grids. Um, so just another little thing that, you know, as you think about how many times you click and delete things out of your inbox and things like that, you know, if that's saving you 100 plus cl a clicks every time you do a flip grid post, you know, that's a lot of time to add up in the long run. So, whoo. That's a lot. That's a lot for 9 a.m. Good thing I got my, my banana shirt on. That's a little, that's a little crazy here. Um, so um, I've been talking at you a lot. Hopefully you found some things that are been helpful or new. Um, what I'm going to do is if you've got some questions or thoughts, I'm looking back here in the chat. If there's something else you want, throw it in the, the Google chat. I can see that. You can throw it here in the document. Um, I know there, there's quite a few, and I may not get to all of them here in, in 10 minutes. Um, but let's maybe do this. Um, lots of great questions. I will follow up and make sure in the email response that I give with the recording of this Flipgrid answers to all of these. Some of these I, I may have addressed, but I'll give you answers to all of these. But maybe at this point, I mean, there's lots of amazing people on this call. Um, how are some of you using this? Are, are there some cool ways and maybe why we have educators together I can answer questions on my own and get that back to you in, in 24 hours, but we don't always get a chance to have educators from all over the world um, mm -hmm. collectively. So if you have a, a cool idea, throw it in the chat, and then that way so we don't have everybody turning their mics on at once and then it's chaos and then we have that weird, awkward silence of people waiting and back and forth and nothing gets done. Um, let's maybe share. And then for all of you, I'm copying the, the, the questions from the chat. So Kim, I see here, you've got quite a few. I'll, I'll get to your questions in the document. I will. Um, so Aaron, I see that you did a virtual track meet. You want to throw your mic on, maybe talk about that, why people um, might have some other ideas to share. Yeah. Uh, we had a virtual running club for the middle school and I had certain kids ask if we could have a meet. So I decided to do it uh through flipgrid and um i created a little flipgrid for um the whole virtual event but then like you then there was the mile run and then you had to post your video and, and your time with that then there was the 100 meter dash you had to post your video so uh and then the different for the different events um and it was yesterday actually i think it was the meet yeah wednesday so um yeah, I thought I'd give it a try, just a different way to, to have kids show um, how we did the running. No, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. And I mean, I think that's it, is just taking this idea of something as simple as really, it's, it's, it's video recording, but how do we start to create these communities and interactions knowing that we can't be together? And so I think it's important that we, you know, even like a virtual track thing, like how cool is that? It's, you know, I think it's good for these kids to see some of these tools beyond just content and standards all the time. Like, you know, there can be other ways of, of, of doing this. And um, I know you shared this also, Aaron, I think in, in the in the first webinar, I know my wife does it too, but you can use the Flipgrid shorts to create little videos, like little daily video messages to post in your Google Classroom or your Schoology, whatever your platforms are, just so kids can hear and see you. Um, you know, my wife just got an email yesterday just from a student thanking her for showing her face every day because not every teacher does that and just you know how important that is and um so i think you can use these just to create a little hey you know happy thursday or whatever it might be and so i think that's just these small little things um and i think that's what's important um they don't have to be necessarily earth shattering huge things that require hours and hours of work it's these little things that we know that, that help, help connect us as, as, as we get rocking and rolling um 
other ideas. Anybody else using these on here that, that have cool ideas or think that they've been experimenting with that they'd be willing to uh, jump on and share? So I see here too, uh, Christy, you've got a question about getting the students on. Um, yeah, I think this tool is pretty straightforward um, to get, I mean, kids figure this out. My daughter is a third grader. Um, she can do it and she didn't need me. I mean, obviously she's lucky to have two parents as educators, but like she didn't need my help. Once you kind of figure out how to hit a big green button, you know, all the extra bells and whistles are, all next step stuff, but in terms of to make a video. And it works really well for parents too. It's not overwhelming. It's not another, I mean, a lot of these things we're, we're sending home just seem like a foreign language to a lot of parents. We start talking about, you know, Google Classroom, Google Drive and turn it in button and, you know, all these Adobe Spark and Flipgrid, all these things. But here it's like, you can show them and you can, and they can have access to it too. That's what's nice. You can make a, a Flipgrid that says, here's how to record. And you can send them that link and they can watch it. You know, almost kind of like the Flipgrid Geeking PD, you can create something like that, use something just like that for the kids and parents. I mean, the, the learning is, is pretty universal. Um, and so it does go, go smooth. Um, I use it with a lot of global projects where access to technology is very limited and it's the one tool that we seem to have very little problems with. So um, it's been good. Uh, I see Andrea has posted a comment, so just you guys didn't see that about doing a cooking show. Uh, that's pretty good. That, that, that's pretty cool. I like that idea. Um, we've been doing a lot of cooking in our house just to entertain my children, but at least me eating like snarfing twenty cookies, so it's not helping me on uh, the the quarantine diet. Is not really a diet, but um, I like that idea, Andrea. I think that, that that's a really good one there as well. So. Um, I love this. I, hopefully you, you found some value. I won't just keep you on just for the sake of, we've got four minutes here. I know you've got busy days and these are long days and everything else in between. Um, but I do appreciate you joining. If you have questions or anything else, I, you can always feel free to reach out and ask, always willing to help. I'll follow up with all these questions um, and probably look for that uh, email from me tomorrow, the recording and everything else um, that, that you can go ahead and uh, have access to. Um, oh yes, Catherine, flip hunts are great too, yeah. I've also saw someone did, uh, they call it um, flip, flip shenary, doing like Pictionary with the whiteboards, but through Flipgrid. Um, I've seen people too weave in a Kahoot, do the Kahoot is the focus, they do the Kahoot and then they give a video response of new learning or questions or however you want to phrase the Kahoot. So there's so many ways I think that, that, that we, we can use this, but um, I'll stick around. Um, if there's other questions, people want me to, to help them that way. Otherwise, have a wonderful day. I'll follow up with all these resources. If you have access to all this, um, you know, and feel free to jump into that Flipgrid Geeking PD, throw some videos in there. There's lots of challenges and activities for the learning. And, uh, you know, continue on doing what you do. We appreciate it. Everybody does. And, uh, you know, summer is almost here. Almost. I can, I can see it on the horizon. But, uh, you know, keep up the good fight, everybody.